What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. Today, we're going to be talking about my must start and my must sit players at the wide receiver and the running back position as we head into week 14 of the fantasy football season. If this is your first time watching one of these videos. I really like to touch on some matchups that I think are very positive matchups, matchups that I love here in the week 14 slate, and maybe some matchups that are a little bit tougher and that I might be trying to avoid if I have the luxury. This week has a lot of bye weeks, but we are going to be talking about a bunch of players. So without wasting any more time, let's hop right into today's video. Video, and let's start talking about these must starts and must sits. All right, so kicking it off with the must starts, I want to talk about the wide receivers first. And the first wide receiver I want to talk about is Calvin Ridley of the Tennessee Titans. Now, Calvin Ridley gets a good matchup this week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. The game does have a little bit of a lower projected game total. It is only 39 and a half points in this one. So there isn't going to be a ton of points. However, Jacksonville is ranked 30th against fantasy football wide receivers this year, giving up a ton of points to the position. And we have the Jacksonville Jaguars as favorites only by three and a half points, though. However, I want to talk about the last couple of weeks for Calvin Ridley. Going back to week eight, he has been a top 24 wide receiver in our fantasy football lineups three different times that gives us a couple other times where he has been 31 and and basically playable in our lineups but the big thing about calvin ridley is that he continues to get a ton of opportunities he's seeing a 25 percent target share right now with a total of 87 targets so far on the year there's going to be a lot of opportunity for calvin ridley to continue to perform here in this game this week and a lot of that is due to the fact that will levis has been playing some better football over the last couple of weeks so if you are going to decide to play calvin ridley in your lineups this week he is somebody that i definitely am willing to play. I have him as a top 15 wide receiver in my rankings at the moment, and I do think he is going to be a high-end wide receiver too for fantasy football teams that need him here this week. Now going on to my next must-start wide receiver, I want to talk about Jacoby Myers of the Las Vegas Raiders. He is also another wide receiver that I have currently inside of my top 20 wide receivers in the week. I do have him this week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which does have a 46-point projected game total. Right now, they are ranked 23rd against fantasy football wide receivers in overall fantasy points per game, but when you look at the points above expectation this is a matchup where they're giving up 3.5 fantasy points above the expectation so Jacoby should have some opportunities here to add some extra fantasy football points now the Raiders they are six and a half point underdogs in this matchup so we are expecting them to throw the football a little bit more and since the departure of Devonta Adams Jacoby Myers has performed for us as a fantasy football asset finishing four of his last five games inside the top 25 wide receivers and two of those five games inside of the top 12. I think Jacoby Myers he's a guy who's going to continue to be relied on in this offense offense he's obviously still working behind the number one option there in Las Vegas that is Brock Bowers but Jacoby's still been great for us and the matchup profiles is a good one if you are playing him this week like I said I have him as a top 20 option and I think he's a safe wide receiver to play here against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers now moving on to my must-start running backs I want to talk about Tony Pollard also of the Tennessee Titans like I said they get the Jacksonville Jaguars this week and this matchup actually profiles even better for Pollard than it does Calvin Ridley when you look at the fantasy points per game being allowed by the Jaguars right now to running backs they're currently ranked third first giving up 26.4 fantasy points per game it's also a good matchup when you look at the points above the expectation because Jacksonville is currently giving 4.3 fantasy points above that expectation it's also a matchup like I mentioned that is a low projected game total but we did have the Tennessee Titans as favorites Tony Pollard is seeing about 76% of the rushing share there and he does have a 15% target share it's been a couple tough weeks he's got some bad matchups so far over the last couple of weeks against Houston he had a bad one against Minnesota the Los Angeles Chargers it's been a tough stretch however I do think this is a good get right opportunity opportunity for Tony Pollard. He has finished as a top 24 running back in eight weeks so far this season. So that should continue here this week against the Jaguars. And if you are playing him in your fantasy football leagues, this is a player that I have fairly high in my rankings. I have him as my running back 13 currently, but I think that'll make him a very high end running back too for your fantasy football leagues and somebody you can definitely rely on this week. Now, moving on to my next must start running back. I want to talk about Tyrone Tracy Jr. He gets a great matchup this week as well. He's going to end up playing the New Orleans Saints who are currently giving 4.4 fantasy points above the expectation expectation and allowing 24.4 fantasy points per game to that running back position group that is 29th in the NFL at the moment you look at the projected game total in this one it's not a lot it's 41 points with the Giants being underdogs so maybe there's an opportunity here for Tyron Trace to catch a couple more receptions he does have some pass catching props being a former wide receiver that is now converted to running back but when I look at the last couple of weeks starting in week five when he's really kind of taken over this backfield he has multiple RB1 performances and a couple of top 24 performances as well I think this is 
is going to be a good spot for him here this week. I have him in my rankings as the running back 16 currently and somebody who I think is a very safe running back to play if you need him. He also has a pretty decent playoff schedule, so somebody that we should be excited about moving forward as well. But now that we've talked about the must start players, let's talk about some must sit players. I want to kick it off at the wide receiver position and I think we should be considering benching Brian Thomas Jr. if you have the flexibility this week. The matchup for Brian Thomas Jr. against the Tennessee Titans is a little bit of a tougher one. Right now they're allowing 3.3 fantasy points below the expectation, only 24.3 fantasy points allowed to the wide receiver position as a whole, which is the seventh best in the NFL. And you also have to account for the fact that we do have Mac Jones under center again for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now looking at this matchup, we've talked about it already, but that projected game total is very low. The good news is the Jaguars, they are projected as underdogs in this matchup. So maybe they will be playing from behind in the second half, which could result to a couple more passing opportunities for the Jaguars. However, when I look at the last couple of weeks for Brian Thomas Jr., pretty much been very tough to trust him ever since Trevor Lawrence has been out of the lineup. Now, last week, obviously, Trevor was back in the lineup for a short period of time against the Houston Texans, and I think that's why he had a better game. But with Mac Jones back under center, I fear we're going to have some of those matchups again where he is falling outside of the top 30 wide receivers. And when I'm looking at my rankings this week, this is a player that I currently have as a wide receiver three type of play. In your two wide receiver leagues, you may be able to get away from a guy like Brian Thomas Jr. The matchup's not great. The quarterback play is not going to be great. And I think he's going to be a boom bust touchdown dependent option. So there may be some better options in your leagues that you can play over Brian Thomas Jr. Now, moving on to my next wide receiver, I want to talk about Debo Samuel of the San Francisco 49ers, another wide receiver that hasn't played well over the the last couple of weeks you look at the matchup this week against Chicago and this one is even worse than the Brian Thomas Jr. matchup. Chicago currently is allowing 4.1 fantasy points below the expectation only allowing 23.8 fantasy points per game to the wide receiver group as a whole, which is the fourth best in the NFL. Now, the problem here is that the San Francisco 49ers are running out of things to play for here during the 2024 season. Debo Samuel hasn't been good over the last couple of weeks. We now have three straight finishes where he's been outside of the top 60 wide receivers on the week. It's not been great for Debo Samuel. The last time that he cracked the top 24 was week 10. The last time that he cracked the top 12 was week six, the fantasy football season. So on average so far this year, Debo Samuels finished at the wide receiver 46 on the week when you take all of his weekly finishes and you put them together. His target share is not huge. It's only 19% of the moment. And like I said, this is a game where the matchup is a little bit tougher. When I'm looking at Debo Samuel in my rankings, this is a guy who I have very little confidence in starting at the moment. I think he's right now sitting as my wide receiver 35, which puts him at very low end fringe type of wide receiver three numbers. I'm very nervous about Debo Samuel. He's being out targeted by Juwan Jennings. The offense isn't looking great. There's going to be Isaac Garendo in the backfield, some other stuff. It's not good for Debo Samuel. It's bad news bears i probably would be looking at other options if you have debo samuel this week now moving on to my must say running backs one running back that i'm a little bit nervous about this week is going to be chuba hubbard of the carolina panthers now he gets matched up at the philadelphia eagles on paper this is a bad matchup because philly's allowing 4.9 fantasy points below the expectation only 15.7 fantasy points per game to the running back group as a whole that is the fourth best in the nfl now the game does have a higher projected game total it does sit at 46 right now chuba hubbard and the panthers they are projected as 12 and a half point underdogs in this matchup so there could be some PPR appeal from Chuba Hubbard it does worry me from a rushing share standpoint I don't know if they're going to be able to run the football in this matchup against the Eagles and the one thing that worries me just a little bit about Chuba Hubbard is last week Jonathan Brooks got involved in the game for the Carolina Panthers it did result in a very bad game from Chuba Hubbard he only had 12 carries for 43 yards and he didn't get any of the receiving work in that game all of the receiving work at the running back position went to Jonathan Brooks makes me a little bit nervous for Chuba Hubbard obviously this week the matchup isn't great and now you think that Jonathan Brooks might even get a little bit more worked in here with another week as an active player on this team and unfortunately I think a lot of people are not going to have the luxury of sitting Chuba Hubbard but if you are playing Chuba Hubbard this is a player that I currently have as my running back 23 on the week and a player that I'd be looking at as a fringe running back to play here in week 14. And now let's go to my last must sit player at the running back position I am going to talk about Gus Edwards of the Los Angeles Chargers and unfortunately for Gus Edwards this year has not went great so unfortunately you're seeing some Ravens highlights on the screen because he just hasn't done enough for the Chargers to get any Chargers highlights on the screen at the moment this week he plays against the Kansas City Chiefs it is an arrowhead on the road this matchup is horrible on paper Kansas City is allowing 7.6 fantasy points below the expectation which is the best in the NFL by far 
only 13.1 fantasy points allowed to that running back group as a whole. That's the best in the NFL, again, by far. This matchup is going to be tough, man. It's one of those division matchups where it is a lower projected game total, only 43 points, not one of the lowest of the weekend, but that's still not a lot of points. Tough for me to also trust Gus Edwards because last week when he became the quote unquote starting running back for the Chargers, he only had seven opportunities, six carries for 32 yards and one target, one reception for one receiving yard. He's not going to do a lot in the receiving game. I'm worried he's going to be splitting with Kamani Vidal. If you are playing Gus Edwards, he very much feels like a player where unless he falls into the end zone, you're going to be very disappointed with the week. He has the ability to probably score less than seven points for our fantasy football teams without getting into the end zone. If he gets into the end zone, he might break double digits, but it's very tough for me to trust Gus Edwards this week. And if you are forced to plug him into your lineup this week, this is a guy that I'm going to be looking at a very low upside, low floor type of running back three play. And I'd be playing some other options like Jalen Warren or Travis Etienne or some of these other guys who haven't been super impressive so far this year over a guy like Gus Edwards. And I'm not forcing him into the lineup just because he has opportunity. This is a necessity play only low upside RB3. Don't play Gus Edwards if you don't have to. So there you have it. That is my must start and my must sit running backs and wide receivers on the week here in week 14. It is the last week of the regular season. So this is the last time we're going to be doing the must start and must sit players. We're going to be doing tons of fantasy football Q&A streams, live streams, recaps, all of that stuff throughout the fantasy football playoffs. So make sure you're still subscribed to the channel for that. And then tons of dynasty fantasy football content coming after the fantasy football playoffs and after you clinch that fantasy football championship out of your league. Hopefully you guys have subscribed, liked the video and joined the discord. If you haven't, make sure you do those things for me. Those are the best free ways to support for our channel. I have nothing else for you today, so I will see you on our next episode. But until then, peace out.